What some of you might not know is I got into medical school out of my third year of undergrad. There are a lot of minor reasons, but I feel like the major reason is my interview performance, more specifically in the MMI during my interview cycle that year. We wanted to make this video to show you exactly how to excel in that type of interview. If you want to learn from my personal experience doing all those three interviews, watch till the end. Let's start off by understanding what MMI is. MMI stands for multiple mini interviews, and it's a unique interview style that tests a range of skills from communication to ethical reasoning to conflict resolution. Imagine rotating through multiple stations, and each station would present you with a new scenario or question that you need to answer. Each station is assessed by a different interviewer, and this seemingly adds an extra layer of complexity, but we'll actually discuss why this is a game changer in just a moment. Remember that the MMI can throw any question type at you, whether it's an ethical scenario, a personal reflection question, a collaboration station, or even a role play station. This video isn't going to be a breakdown of all the different types of questions on the MMI. We already have a video for that and you can watch that right here. Instead, we're going to give you five tips that are going to be integral to your success on the MMI. We guarantee you'll never find these tips anywhere else and they are going to give you success. Comment down below if you have any specific questions, we'll make sure we answer them. Let's get into it. While there's a lot of resources that show you what you need to say, there's not a lot of resources that show you how you can come up with those things you need to say during an interview. In other words, we're going to show you exactly how to do this with our first tip. Hold up, are you expecting an interview this interview cycle? Have you already started preparing? We have the perfect resource for you. We made a worksheet that's 19 pages long that has everything you need to get started on your interview preparation. It gives you links for your questions. It also tells you how to approach them and how to answer them with practice scenarios. This resource is reviewed by 10 other medical students who have all said that this worked for them and we hope it helps you as well. It's a framework we've coined SPEED. Starting off, the S in SPEED stands for situation. And in the situation, you need to understand what exactly is going on. And you do this by relating this back to the four principles of bioethics, which is autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. You can read more about these in the description below. The P stands for perspective. This means who is involved directly or indirectly, and how are they impacted by the situation. In an example where you are deciding whether to prescribe a treatment or not, you need to take into account the perspectives of the patient, your team members, and their family as they all influence the decision that you are trying to make. Next is explanation. What are the particular nuances of the question that you must address when you're answering it? For example, if a question specifies that the person is from a particular cultural background, how does that impact your overall answer? This also includes hypothetical scenarios, mainly for ethical situations, but the explanation is the meat of your answer. So focus on it and make sure it's good. The other E stands for emotions. This is mainly to add a personal touch to your answers, but emotions can be considered in multiple ways. You should think about how you would be feeling in that situation, but you should also be thinking about how your emotions might impact that situation if appropriate. If something appears to be extremely challenging or involves an emotionally charged conversation, you should mention that because it humanizes your answer. And lastly, we come to your decision, which is the D. Decision making is super important in medical school interviews because oftentimes the question is actually asking for what you did or what you would do. Making a decision is one of the first things you should make clear when you're actually thinking about your answer. And it's mainly referring to your primary course of action and for personal questions, what you learn from it. The second tip is for personal questions. You may have heard that when you're talking about your experiences, you want to talk about lessons you've learned and connect it to medicine. But which lessons do you actually mention? Look no further than the CanMeds roles, which are basically considered sacred for the interview prep process. This also helps you add keywords into your answer, which makes it easier to represent which area of CanMeds you're talking about when you're answering your question. Let's say you wanted to talk about a time you empathize with someone. Well, one core trait of empathy is active listening, which is listed under the communicator role. All you have to say then is that through the specific actions you took, you understood the importance of active listening. Then you should reflect on why active listening is important in medicine. What's more is you don't have to come up with tons of these lessons and stories. 
Come up with a broad range of lessons that can apply to the key stories you want to mention during your interview, and then you'll see that you've developed an arsenal of these lessons that could be used to tackle any type of personal question. By the way, this works because the interviewers don't know which story you use in the question before. Like we said before, in the MMI, the interviewers are all different. Tip three, a lot of people try to be innovative in what they say. Basically, they reinvent the wheel so that they stand out from the crowd. However, the key to success in a medical school interview isn't trying to reinvent the wheel. It's by showing your character, being authentic in what you say. There are many different ways to do that. Don't hesitate to make small talk with interviewers, to make fun of yourself if the question calls for it, to be more expressive if appropriate. You can even speak in a rhetorical manner to make yourself more dramatic. Ultimately, being yourself, being authentic, is the only way to stand out. After all, everyone has the same amount of information. Tip number four, the importance of reflecting on personal experiences is a critical aspect in preparing for the MMI. Interviewers need to understand how those meaningful life experiences of yours have shaped you. These experiences need not to be exclusively related to medicine. They can be anything that authentically shows your personal growth and essential qualities that are relevant to medicine. The goal is to offer interviewers a glimpse into the candidate's character and values. Try to write down or think critically about your life experiences, identifying challenges faced, achievements celebrated, or moments of self-discovery. Creating narratives around these experiences will help in answering personal questions during the interview. Authenticity will also be emphasized, urging candidates to use examples that genuinely resonate with them and contribute to a holistic understanding of their unique qualities and skills. Tip five, and this is often one of the most overlooked, and it is to build a practice schedule. A lot of people just practice questions day in and day out and don't have an actual structured schedule to go along with their practice. But this is a grave mistake because there's no discipline to it. Keeping an organized schedule allows you to keep track of your progress. It will also help you make sure that you stay on track and don't miss any practice sessions. If you want a sample schedule, be sure to check out the worksheets in our description. So how should you organize your schedule? Start by figuring out how much of your time in the day you want to dedicate to reviewing your activities or your ABS, alongside establishing a consistent time slot for reading over your daily news articles. These articles are key because they inform the application of ethical principles for those ethical questions. Then get to practicing. Our recommendation is to hammer down ethical questions, then move on to personal questions, then policy questions, and then any other types of remaining MMI questions. This is in order of their relevance to medical school interviews. Once you're comfortable with each type of MMI question, move on to doing actual mock interviews, basically mimicking the real MMI format. Now, before we wrap up, let me share some of my own MMI experience. I'll be answering some of the questions you guys have asked in the past. Question one, how did you handle the pressure of quick rotations between MMI stations? This is something that's definitely very hard, especially if you messed up the last question or said something wrong. It's really hard to bounce back when you only have a few minutes before the next question. The way I practiced this was when I was doing my practice before the actual interviews, I would do some mock runs where I would not include any time between questions. I know this was stressful and doesn't help too much because it doesn't actually represent what the interview will be like, but it does replicate what the stress level will be like. So I would imagine that it would help you as well. Try to practice with no break time in between and that'll put you in the same situation you might be in in the actual interview. Were there specific strategies that you used in your MMI to keep your responses authentic? This is a very important question and all of you need to listen in. So number one, pick actual experiences that you've invested a lot of time into and experiences that you actually know about. Do not fake this. These interviewers are looking at hundreds of questions every day. They know who's faking and who's not faking. So if you pick the right experiences, you can be passionate about it. Number two. I know we told you to have a structure in your answers. We've said that over multiple videos and you want to have that structure because you don't want to be phased if there's something or a question that throws you off. Therefore, what you need to do is you want to maintain that structure, but you want to leave a little bit of room for creativity. So what I used to do is I had an actual structure that I would maintain every time, but I would leave 10 to 15 seconds at the end for some creativity. For example, let's say there's a question where they're asking you about how to change the system and they've presented two different scenarios that you can take 
and they ask you which choice to make. You can use your own creativity to offer a third solution at the end, even though in the actual question, you were just comparing pros and cons of each one. So try to do that and try to maintain authenticity that way. Question three, what surprised you the most about the MMI process looking back at it now? Well, I feel like the MMI process isn't too surprising. They kind of tell you everything you need to know. I feel like it's a lot easier than if you were in person in a panel interview where they could throw literally any question at you and you have to answer right away. So I think it's a, a really big privilege to be able to do these MMI interviews. If I had to pick one thing that surprised me throughout the whole process, it was that talking to a screen by yourself is actually a bigger shock than you would think. I know you're practicing at home recording yourself and with other friends, but it's very different when you're actually in the situation and you're looking at yourself, looking at every small detail when you're answering the question. Therefore, I'd really recommend recording yourself as much as possible and getting used to that because I know a lot of people aren't used to being on camera for a long period of time. I was lucky enough to be able to have that experience through Medboys when I was interviewing different people through our podcast. Question four, reflecting on your MMI journey, is there any advice you wish you had received before starting the process? I feel like with the MMI journey, there are so many different pieces of information out there that it's so hard to compile what's actually true and what's not true. Because of that, there's a lot of confusion. When you ask your friends how their interviews were, or if you ask them for advice, everyone has different pieces of advice. So I feel like one thing I wish I knew was that this is going to happen and I need to compile all this information in one single place. And then I need to figure out what's right and what's wrong. So what I would recommend to all of you, I know we mentioned our worksheets, but you could do this yourself as well. What I would recommend is go to Google and just copy down all the information you find anywhere. Put that all into one doc and try to organize it and then send it to a few people who've already done interviews. Ask them what's relevant, ask them what's most important and then highlight those facts. And I'm sure that'll help a lot in your preparation and it's going to get you a lot more far ahead than many of your peers. And there you have it guys, a guide to tackling the MMI and addressing some things you might not have known about this interview style. Remember these tips, practice, but don't over prepare. Shout out to Nimit for sharing his insights. And if you found this video helpful, you'll definitely find the worksheets helpful below in the description. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Oh, and happy holidays and a happy new year.